Hey everybody, Joe Conkley in the shop. Today, we are going to look at this lovely 1913 Gibson F4 man. some of the work I need to do on it. A refret and a rebuild of this bridge. The neck on the instrument had a fair amount of bow in it from string tension, so that's why we're refretting it to straighten that neck out. It has been previously refretted, and the main thing that that previous refret presents is the fingerboard has been sanded quite, uh, quite a bit. The side dots here. Previously, they were um, in the middle of the fretboard and now there's been so much sanding that they are now on the top edge of the fretboard and part of the dot has been sanded right off. I can only do so much sanding on this then to, to, during the refret and of course one of the important parts of refretting it is to get the fretboard in the proper uh, um, geometry that I need which is with a slight back bow and I would normally accomplish that with some sanding but have to minimize that. So that's one job that I'm working on. And the other one that I'd like to present more to you today here is uh, modifying this bridge. This is the original bridge that comes on the instrument. It has a slot in the top. And in that slot, so it has a slot in the top with uh, two saddles that fit in there. And the main problem with these saddles is they are not intonated properly, meaning that they are just straight across, which um, does not allow for proper intonation, uh, mostly between the, this middle pair of strings. But actually, there's an intonation point for each uh, set of strings. This is a bridge that I had saved in my stash the problem with this bridge is that the front of the slot got too much string tension pushing forward on it and it cracked right here making this bridge base pretty much unusable and not uh, just because it's not structurally sound but I can use several pieces of this bridge for because it does have the proper intonation this piece has the low G string intonating off the back edge and the D string intonating off the front edge so that I can just slide right in here. This is for the A string and it has a slight overhang here. You can see the, the, the little overhang edge which is this front part right there. And what we have left for this bridge is someone made a bone piece that uh, did not fit and does not overhang. I'm going to uh, replicate this last piece for this bridge. And so to do that I started off just a piece of ebony stock that we have. I cut this chunk of it off and so that this chunk is the right width and the right height now. I also sanded in a little curve for that uh, part of the bridge as it curves right up there. And now I want to cut that, uh, cut that little ledge off there. I made it a little long so I have something to handle because as you can see with this piece we were just even just trying to look at that ledge, it's very hard to handle it. I can't hold it and do the work that I need to do, so I left a little length on it here so I have something to grab onto and something to put into the vise. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. So now I have my uh, workpiece in the vise and uh, I've got some pencil marks on here that I'm, I am going to start a line with this little saw here that will establish part of my shelf. Just kind of trying to go down to half the depth there. All right, so I've got that cut made. Now I have to make this cut, which will establish the other side of that. There we go. And then I will make this last cut here. Will. And then I'll clean all this up with a chisel. Basically, I'm just taking this corner out of here so that I can make that shelf. And 
All right. Now, hopefully, I can come in here, just chisel this little chunk out. shelf chiseled out there. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, so I have several pieces ready to go here. This chunk needs to be fit into the slot. It's just a little fat. This one will go in next for the A string. Also, it's starting to fit in there. And now I have this piece which will overhang the front edge here. The A string overhangs the back edge like so, and the E string will overhang the front edge like so. All I need to do now is to cut it off to length and then clean up everything and get it all fit together. is the original bridge with the two borrowed pieces fit in for the G string intonated on the back edge here, the D string intonated on the front edge, the A string intonated on the back edge with this extra piece that overhangs that back edge there. And then my new piece, which would be for the E string, cut my little shelf in it there and it fits in like so, and it overhangs on the front edge. I have some more modifications to do to this, but it's basically fit and you get the idea. I'm going to uh, take this squared off piece on the top and uh, take some material off this back edge so that all I have left is a shelf right here and cut my two slots in there and I'll be ready to go with that uh, bridge. So I, needed it, I need to get it to that point before I come back to the to the to the uh, neck and fretboard of the mandolin, one other challenge that I've got here is the last time that this instrument was refretted, it uh, was refretted with what I would consider to be a a little older method. Um, so um, when I refret an instrument because it has a bow in the neck and the instrument has no truss rod, what I'm trying to accomplish is what's called a compression refret. I'm trying to put uh, the fret wire, which has a tang that goes into the slot, and I'm trying to make that fit in the slot very tight, because what it allows me to do then is to take that slot and open it up like so, which creates a back bow in the instrument, which strengthens the neck and really sets it in place. The method that was used to refret before was uh, a method that allows you to seat the fret a little bit easier. The slots are opened up so that the fret wire itself just drops right in rather than having to be tapped in or pounded in. It drops right in, you can get it to seat just where you want it, and then you glue it in with epoxy from there. But one of the things that that job does is eliminate, or not eliminate, but make uh, the compression refret quite a bit more difficult and I think it's one of the reasons why the neck continued to bow on this instrument and it needs to be refretted again because there was no compression between the fret tang and the fretboard. So um, it did not strengthen the neck, it allowed the neck to bow more which is of course why the uh, 
fretboard needed to be sanded so drastically and why it needs to be refretted again. So although I'm going to have to um, minimize the sanding and uh, use a fret wire that has the largest tang possible so that I can get that um, compression back in there. But that's my next job there and uh, you've already seen me hit an instrument with a hammer and uh, so we, won't, we don't have to do that today. So uh, I'm going to continue working on this uh, bridge and get through this refret and uh, that's what I've got for you in the shop today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure to like us and share on Facebook and uh, we'll see you soon in the shop.